Pause up, everyone. Welcome to Meowie Hour. I'm your host, Arden Moore. As you know, this show comes to you each and every Wednesday night live by the Cat Fancier Association. And uh, we have a new sponsor today. What? Yes, for the whole month of May, we have the Doc and Phoebe. Bleh, there, well, there you go. Great job, Art. The Doc and Phoebe um, company, they make those cool mouse-shaped feedings yes. for cats. Um, our good friend, Dr. Liz Bales, a feline veterinarian extraordinaire, is going to be on our show May 18th. But she and her company are going to give away some uh, goodies from the Doc and Phoebe line throughout the whole month of May. What's that? Yeah, pause up the Dr. Liz. Um, also, I cannot do this show without my co-pilot, and you're going to wonder why I'm using that word. It's got a lot of meaning on the show tonight. I'm talking about all breed CFA cat judge and a cool person, Kathy Black. And we don't discriminate. We have our doggy designee, Destiny. Hey, Destiny. And speaking of pilots, we had one that just uh, flew in from Wisconsin. You're going to love his story, his tale. We please welcome the founder of a, a company called Dubert, the one and only Chris Roy. Welcome to Meowie Hour, Chris. Thank welcome, you. Chris. I love the introduction. Really excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a lot to cover. And for all of you out there, you know I'm that bartender, but the first Wednesday of every month, I dedicate it to all of us, and I'm making a mocktail. It's very yummy, so you'll have to check it out. But first, let's talk a little bit about what's happening in the world. A lot of us, um, I want to celebrate, not be a downer, but two days ago uh, in the world of pets, we lost a champion, a great, great person. Her name is Paula Gregg. Paula Gregg was the president of the Cat Writers Association, she also had a pair of shaded silver Persians, I hope I did that right, uh, named uh, um, uh, Truffles and Brulee. Go ahead and show that photo. This is, uh, she was diagnosed like three weeks ago with pancreatic cancer and she's gone. She lived each day to the fullest. She was a math professor. She always had a smile on her face. She, she uh, had a blog called Sweet Perfections. She and loved those kitty cats, too. She did love those kitties. And uh, I am very grateful to share with you the news that um, the gal that she got the kitties from, uh, her, her name, and I got it right here. Let's see. All right. A special thank you to Terry Rogers. Terry Rogers is a professional cat breeder and a long, long time friend of Paula. And she adopted uh, Truffle and Brulee. And you know, most of us breeders have a clause that if at any point in time that you can't take care of the animal, we'll take it back. We brought it in this world. We're going to make sure it's cared for. So I'm glad to see her breeder decided to take yeah, the cat back. Yeah, because these are senior kitties. And yeah. she said, quote, I will do my best to honor and love you, kitties, as well as mom Paula did. I know she'll be looking out for us. So to the heavens, to Paula, and thank you, Terry Rogers, for helping these kitties have a good home and stay together. And earlier this year, check this out. This is the President's Award from the Cat Writers Association. The President's Award is given to the best of all categories. Humbly, I won it this year. I had a breakthrough year. I didn't get COVID, but I had a lot of <laughs> Awards that broke through, and I'm holding this because it was presented from Paula, so it will always have special meaning to me. I'm sure there's some of you out there you know Paula, um, and uh, just think good thoughts for her cats and her family. And uh, and I'm not trying to make this a downer. I think it should be a celebration. Don't we you? had her? We had her on the show. We had a lot of time, a lot of fun with her. Yeah, so. she always had a smile, and there's no way I'm ever going to take her, was going to take her on in a math question. Holy no <laughs> No, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> She's a math professor from South Carolina. But moving on, because life is a circle. I'm not going to do the Simba song, 
But I also want to do a special shout out to a little boy, and he is in Boise, Idaho. And his name, his name is Ben Miller. Check this picture out, everybody. Look at that cutie pie. Did you look like that? I bet, Chris, you probably look like that little boy <laughs> when you were little. You kind of look like him grown up. He's cute. <laughs> well, here's his story. A couple of years ago, he went into the Idaho Humane Society with his grandma, and he noticed that a lot of the kittens didn't have any toys. So he talked with his mom, and he's raising money through the sale of his lemonade stand to get items for the cats in that shelter. And he has raised almost $2,000. Wow. That's amazing. Um, Again, his name is Ben Miller. He's from Boise. His mom is Amy Miller on Facebook. And she said that they're getting money to help these kitties out from all over the country, even those that aren't even getting a glass of lemonade. Um, and he said he has no plans, he's a big nine-year-old, to stop his charity work for the shelter. And he says it's like the coolest thing you could ever do. Another statement that real men love cats. Yes, that's fantastic. That story. Isn't he a good man? A good young man, isn't he? Absolutely. <laughs> and we have a good young man here in the house too, Chris Roy from Dubert. And we're going to dive in more into it, but let's tease everybody. You gave the perfect elevator ride to describe what the heck is Dubert dot com oh over to me all right so the the best way to describe dubert is it's kind of like a combination of volunteer uber and airbnb for rescue animals so I people can be a transporter they can be foster there's so many ways they can get involved in helping our you know feline friends and all sorts of other kinds of animals yeah we do dogs cats that's good now you have a five cats at home right yes okay. i have all um, girls is the one that looks like this one anywhere within grabbing distance? No, no, she's not. Her sister, maybe. I'll see if I can get them to come over here. Come here. Yeah, you, you, you got to do this, man. You got to bribe. <laughs> you got you to bribe? Oh, here's Squeak. Hi, this is okay, Squeak. Okay, everybody, let's take a look. Graham, <laughs> meet Rusty. Rusty, meet Graham. <laughs> she's like, I don't want to no. be on TV. Yeah, get me out of here. <laughs> how, how old is Graham? Um, oh, I don't even know. I think three. <gasps> yeah, because we got her from the shelter. So she, he's going to be turning three. Come on. Maybe. I'm, I'm not Maybe. making this up. Can we do ancestrycat.com? Maybe. We should. You're That'd my sister from a long little. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. I know you guys are chomping at the bit. Who won last week's trivia contest? Oh, by the way, first, my apologies. Do you have any CFA news, Miss Kathy? No. Okay, moving forward. <laughs> um, the question that I asked last week was this. There is a new mayor, and you might appreciate it. It's in the Midwest, Chris. It's okay. in a town called Hell, <laughs> Michigan. Can you imagine living in Hell, Michigan? No, thank oh. you. Um, anyway, it's a politician who purrs. It turns out that this cat was voted into office April 24th. And he's an internet star with more than 700,000 followers on TikTok and about 400,000 on Instagram. And the name of the cat is Jinx. So last week we had our kitty, doggy, and yummy raid, the hydration drinks. Uh, Kathy, who's the lucky winner? The lucky winner is Becky Ward. And Becky's a new winner. So thank you, Becky, for watching us and she's Good the job. winner of the uh kitty raid doggy raid yummy raid samples all right so we have a new sponsor in town yes. and the answer to the name of doc and phoebe and uh it is a an amazing change the whole eating screen uh scene for cats as we mentioned dr liz bales is the um brains behind the creation of these hunting feeders for cats and check this out now Chris you said you you're pretty familiar with this right oh yeah yeah I've got those they work great yeah and it's all about cats like to hunt kitch kill eat groom sleep as Jackson Galaxy would say 
And putting just food in a bowl kind of makes them oh, yawn. But how are your cats with these uh, these mice-like puzzles, Chris? So they figured it out pretty darn quick, right? <laughs> it's a little, I mean, because I had it all the way open at first, and they were like flipping. It's like, oh, food. That was easy, right? Five seconds later, the thing is empty. I'm like, okay, we got to make this a little harder. So, okay. but, <laughs> Yeah, now, now, and I've learned it's a little harder to do on a hardwood floor. It slides a little bit more, so they got to be a little oh. bit more crafty with it. So, so, our, so you can close it, the opening a little bit more and more and more, correct? I'm just trying to. Yeah, educate. depending on the size of the kibble, right? So it's not letting too much kibble out. Yeah. Um, but they're really nice and you can hide them and they don't, they don't make a mess, which is nice. <laughs> so um, I'm just wondering, how are they at Wordle? Wordle. <laughs> Have you heard of Wordle? Yes. <laughs> I mean, think, I think about that one for a Pertle. second. <laughs> <laughs> the, the cat version would be called Pertle. So, you know, maybe if they're so good at the Doc and Phoebe hunting feeders, you never know. They may be giving you clues if you do Wordle. True. They could. I, yeah. I would love to know what they're thinking half the time. <laughs> so would I. Hey, today is May 4th. Now, some of you know what I'm bringing up. Some of you are like, what? You know what May 4th is. May the what be with you? The 4th be with you. How many of you out there are Star Wars fans? Are you a Star Wars? All right. Oh, yeah. Kathy, okay. So you can't answer this question, Mr. Okay. Chris, because it's going to be announced next week. So I was trying to figure out if there's any cat connection with the Star Wars franchise. And I actually found one. Mm. So here's, the, here's tonight's trivia. In honor of all the Star Wars movies. You ready, guys? Okay. What are the names of the cute, milk-loving felines who live in different worlds around the galaxy in the Star Wars franchise? It's easy to Google, guys. Come on. So here are your choices. A, is it Buka Cats with a B, Duka Cats with a D, Mooka cats with an M or Tuka cats with a T. So Buka, Duka, Mooka, and Tuka. <laughs> I am not tattooing that on my forearm. I was going to say. But you will get your paws on one of the Doc and Phoebe's um, hunt, hunting feeding kit. And it's a game changer for our indoor cats. It works their noodles and they get to be that hunter, and uh, it's a win-win. So we, again, we thank them for um, offering yeah. generously that, and I bet people are getting excited, right, Kathy? Are they so you can, type, you can type your answers on the Facebook Live, but I want you to email me your answers, please, at my email address, kathy.black at yahoo.com, and we'll pick a winner on, uh, let's see, what am I doing this weekend? It's probably going to be Monday before I get the winners chosen. So you've got lots of time. You can watch us on YouTube. You can watch us now live. You can watch it anytime from the Facebook Live. But send me your answers, please, to my email, kathy.black at yahoo.com. Well, said they didn't cheat. They already knew the answer. So they didn't Oh, wow. It. Okay. Yeah. So they, I was trying to be timely. <laughs> before he leaves the building, um, everyone, we have Pet Safety Cat. Casey, here, you want to say hi? Okay. <laughs> he said, um, I am a ginger boy and I understand that your special guest, he loves all animals, but you have kind of a special affinity for these guys, right? Yep, Can you tell us, uh, so we're going to dive in. His official title is he is founder of Dubert.com. Remember the Uber and the Airbnb for cats and dogs that need people to transport them? Well, our special guest, Chris Roy, is a, is a pilot, and he came up with a genius idea, and that is to help move pets in one shelter that need homes to another place. Um, can we show that map, uh, Kathy? It's pretty, yeah. I, I think it's like, you're like a combination of FedEx and Amazon and Chewy, like, <laughs> they don't know what you're doing, but look at this. Can you describe what's going on here, um, Chris? Yeah, so I mean, Dubert is an online platform. It's software, right? And so this is just showing you that you know, in the next seven days, the transports that are taking place that have been plotted or planned by rescues and shelters across the country. So 
you can see they're all orange. It looks like one of them actually has a blue. So the orange ones are northbound and the blue ones are southbound. And it's uh, kind of from and to, and these are rescue relay transports. So they automatically get broken down by the software into legs. So imagine like the relay race when you're a kid, you know, you run the baton to the next person. Yeah. Same kind of concept is, um, we're, but we're transporting animals. And so the software is all custom built and it breaks it into legs and tells you where to meet and provides all the contact information and everything's automated. So it's a great wow. way to, to get involved and spend a couple hours, right? Um, saving animals. It's a great thing to do. If you all go to dubert.com website, and I know Kathy's going to put that link up there. If she hasn't already check it out because there's some amazing statistics and I'm sure they're still rising, but Mr. Chris, you've got about 32,000 volunteers. Yeah. Yeah, we're over 30, over 32,000 volunteers. I mean, um, uh, across the country and even into Canada. So Dubert works oh, wow. in the U.S., Canada, and Australia. Um, oh, really? Because the, yeah, the Aussies down under asked me if I would enable it. And I said, sure, I'm happy well, to Well, we get some work. people from Australia that tune in to Meowie Hour. Hey, down under. There you, you got go. the man right here. So here's another one. You work with over 5,000 organizations. Yeah. These are what? Give me a description of them. Yeah, so they're res you know animal rescues and animal shelters right across the country. So um, they you know there's two sides to do it. There's the volunteer side and there's the organization side. So the organizations yeah. are the ones that are putting out the transport request, and obviously mm -hmm. the volunteers are the ones that are responding and filling up the the legs of the transport request. And same with the foster side of things, right? The organizations are saying, hey, we need to find a foster for this particular animal. And um, the volunteers are the ones that are responding. And so we've got, I mean, I, the best way I like to describe Dubert to people is it's like, it's tools, right? For helping and uh, to connect the volunteers and the organizations together. Because, you know, it's, it's just, it's so hard, right? When you're trying to save yeah. animals and um, there's so many people that really want to help and they want to get involved. And they don't know how. And so my goal is to try and simplify that process, make it really easy on them uh, mm -hmm. so that they can save more animals. So here comes two more stats. Now, in my past life, I was a sports writer. I actually did cover a Super Bowl. It wasn't with your beloved Packers, so sorry. Um, but 6,000 plus transports, what does that mean? So each one of those lines on there is a transport. And wow. so uh, we've done over 6,000 transports transport more than 15,000 animals over the, the lifetime of the software. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, the cool part is I, I don't have to plan each one, right? The software is custom built to do that. Wow. And that's the, that's the fun part, right? I, I love doing transports. I love being a part of it. It's such a rewarding experience. And with the software now, people can, the, the organizations can plan even more transports, right? They can, it's so yeah. much easier where in the past they would have to just email people. So did I know you mentioned- create, Did you create the software? Yes. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna get into his brain power in a second, but everybody's looking uh -oh. at your um, kitty. Is that this is Ash, Ash. Or Ember? This is Ash. Yeah, so Ash is, as you can see, she's a bigger kitty and yeah. she's got twin sister, Ember. So we have Ash and Ember that are black cats and uh, Grammy and Squeak that are orange and Gracie is a, uh, nowhere to be found. Maybe she'll show up. Gracie's a gray and white one. So <laughs> that sounds good. And here's the news or muse that I really want to share. This man and his group of volunteers, they have helped save the lives of over 10,000 cats, dogs, other companion animals, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's very humbling. It's, it's amazing to know that something that I created that has really helped people. I mean, it's it's not all me. It's the people right. that are doing the volunteering. And to me, I'm just helping um, bring out their passion and making it easy for them to get involved. And to know that we've had the, an impact, I think we're approaching 15,000 now. So it's oh. it's just amazing to know that we've had such an impact on the lives of the animals. So we got to dig dive back into time. We're in the time machine, Chris. You ready? Okay. No, no, you're not going to have any upset stomach or anything. Right back or back. Um, you're, how did you become a pilot? And are you a software engineer? Or what would be your proper uh, education? Um, so my education is actually a business background, right? In, in IT, right? Information technology. 
Um, so, you know, fun fact about me, I mean, when I started Dubert, I didn't, I didn't know how to do a website, let alone a software <laughs> program. So a lot of this was a, a journey, a learning experience for me. I mean, I had experience from my day job um, mm -hmm. implementing, you know, software packages. And so I knew, you know, conceptually, but I, nobody had ever told me to write out the software specifications for building the software. So I had to hire my own software engineers and they would say, okay, great. What, what do you want it to do? <laughs> what do you want the screen to look like? What feel? Wow. I'm like, you don't know. <laughs> so but, it's been quite a journey. But driving you now. Um, you're also a pilot. How long have you been a pilot? Uh, I've been a pilot since 1996. Wow. So, um, I was, uh, I was driving on the highway. I lived in Milwaukee at the time. I was driving down to Chicago and, um, was, there's a big sign. There's an airport called Sylvania airport. It's like right off the highway, uh -huh. a big sign that said, learn to fly here with a phone number. And I'm like, I'm just going to do it. And okay. I did. Yeah. And that was kind of the start what of my journey. What kind of planes do you like to fly? So I started in gliders, which is actually an wow. airplane without an engine, right? They and you have plenty of prayer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your fuel is prayer. <laughs> right. Yeah. But there's nothing nothing like soaring is what we call it. No, right? that's like closest... flying like a bird. It's just Yeah, it's quiet. exactly like being yeah. a bird. It's super, super quiet. You don't have an engine. You don't have a radio. Like it's literally, it's you and, you know, you and the birds, which is really neat. And that's where I learned to fly. Okay. And then um, after that, then I got into powered aircraft. Mm -hmm. And started with the small, you know, single engine Cessna and then eventually got a uh, multi-engine license. And who knows? I, you know, I don't know what I want to do now. I, I love, I told somebody asked me what my dream was. I said, I'd love to be able to buy like a C-130, you know, like a really big one. And I could say <laughs> dogs and cats and horses <laughs> and ears and like, you name it. Right. But someday. Yeah. Well, you know, you got all those billionaires out there just giving people a right. joke right up and down. I think what you're doing is flying success. You are saving lives and yeah. they hit the air and they're in the air, right? This is Rusty, right? Is your name Rusty? Yes. <laughs> um, and they also are in the, in the car helping. And I, I'm kind of petting him because I want you to also share, how did you come up with the name for this company? Kind yeah, of so there is always a story, right? So it, it's ironic that we were talking about Star Wars before because this this story actually is on the Star Trek side of things. Oh, okay. um, so for those of you Trekkies, um, back in the days, there used to be a show <laughs> called Star Trek: The Next Generation. I watched. And, it. <laughs> okay, so Captain Jean Luc Picard. Yeah. So Jean -Luc my Picard. first cat, <laughs> yeah, when my first cat was Jean Luc. I thought it was a cool name, right? Fun to say. And when I was getting a second cat, of course, I asked people at work, what, you know, what should I name the other cat? And they came up with all the other character names on the show, you know, um, you know, Jordy and Worf and all this other stuff. Troy, like, yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't feel right. And so I said, I know. I said, who's Jean-Luc's nemesis on the show? Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Jean-Luc's nemesis was Q, right? And was this... Right was this a uh, godlike character almost. And so I'm like, perfect. So I named the cat Q and I thought, brilliant, right? Except when you go to the vet and you walk into the vet and they go, okay, who do we have? And I'm like, Q. And they're like, Q what? I'm like, no, Q. Q? Yeah, Q. C-U-E. No, letter Q. Just the letter Q. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to take you're forever. Like, you're, like, you're like Elon Musk when it comes to naming his kids. <laughs> So I named, I actually had in the vet's records, um, he was named Quincy because I got tired of just having that same, oh. same discussion. But what, what ended up happening is, as you know, our animals, they kind of pick their own name, it seems. Right. And so Q kind of became Qbert, right? Remember the 80s video game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, I, I'm, unfortunately, yes, I remember. Yeah, right. We're old, old enough to remember. And then Qbert kind of morphed into Dubert. And the name stuck, and Dubert was, he was not the brightest cat, but he was the most loving old soul. And what Dubert would do is, he would, he would, I would call it echolocate. So he would be upstairs, and he'd be like, mow, mow. And we'd be like, Dubert. Oh, and he'd be like, mow, mow. And he'd be like, Dubert. And he would literally, like, all the way down the stairs to kind of find where you were. 
And then he'd jump up and he'd lay on your chest. And that was like his way to find you. And so when I was um, trying to come up with a name for the company, I, I saw a picture of Duber that was sitting on my desk and I'm like, I wonder if that's available. And nobody knew yeah. what Duber was. And <laughs> so, but the cool part is now there's, there's 900 people a month that type the word Dubert into Google. So 900 people every month are searching for the word Dubert. So it's, um, it's kind of nice to know that a, a made up word that I created um, from a cat's name is now helping to save the lives of rescue animals. And uh, Dubert uh, sort of looked like Casey a little bit. You said he was a yeah. red and white. That's the proper word for the, all the cat fanciers right? out there. We call him orange and white, but the proper is red and white or ginger boy. And it, my ginger boys are comedians, right, Rusty? Are you a comedian? That's right. Yes, I am. <laughs> so, I mean, he was a good sized cat, right? Oh, yeah. Dubert was a big cat. He was 17 pounds. <laughs> Ooh, that's yeah, he was a big boy, and he was he was a snuggle bug, right? He just wants to he just wanted to lay with you and snuggle in, and you would get a really great nap because his his body <laughs> he just warm you up, and you just kind of <laughs> snuggle in and take a nap. Did you wear a lot of like red and orange uh, shirts? Right, yeah. Well, all the hair all over. You're wearing a dark shirt now. I can. I just know, like right? And it's it covered happens. covered in cat hair. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of used to it now. So how did you, was he at a shelter? Was he on the streets? Was he at a bar? I mean, how did you find him? No, so um, he actually came, so kind of a sad story, but it was a, a, a friend of mine that I worked with. They said, oh, you know, you should, you know, I know this friend of mine that runs a farm and, you know, he, he's got all sorts of cats. So took a trip out to the farm and um, Dubert was the runt of the litter. I mean, he fit in, in my Of course, head. the big ones but, always are. <laughs> yes, always, right? Yeah. They never and, quit uh, eating. <laughs> yeah, and he and he was just like I said, he was a he was kind of one of those dopey cats. He wasn't the brightest cat, but he was just a loving old soul, right? Like I, he was somebody that I'd been reincarnated. It was just like, you know, I'm I'm here, and um, he always just wanted to snuggle and he wanted to be your friend and loved everybody loved people mm -hmm. and so yeah he came came from a farm and you know the rest is history he he was a he lived a long life he did he did he um you know <laughs> Dubert had all sorts of problems he had a bladder surgery he had to have uh -huh. a vertical ear ablation he had I mean but I mean I <laughs> I remember somebody saying to me why are you spending so much money it's just a cat and I said you uh -huh. just don't get it yeah right? he's not just a cat he is you haven't met him yeah yeah like he is much more than just a cat he is a, a personality he's he's like my son right he's you know i can't imagine life without him and when i had to put him down it was the hardest thing but, but i knew legacy it was, lives on yeah. that's it's kind of yeah. like he's like who's go, who's slow to think now i'm up in right. heaven going <laughs> I got this whole company named after me. Yeah, it's like me. you named a whole company after me, right? How so maybe, am I? Maybe he's a slow burn. It could be, right? But yeah, he, I remember when I launched Dubert, I went to, um, you know, an expo and the one lady that came by from a shelter and she was so inspired by the story. She said, we're going to name a shelter cat Dubert. And Aww. so they did. And Let so the legacy then, live on. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm so glad was it wasn't a, Q. <laughs> right well, nobody about, should have to have that conversation multiple times well having a weird name like arden and my right. last name was more and i never could understand when they'd say well is arden your first or last name i'm like yeah let's think about that <laughs> that's right you Not, i don't know. think a week goes by if somebody doesn't call me roy so oh there you go that's right yeah. well kathy black you're you're you would have to be kathy sue or something they have that same dilemma as Chris. No, Ryan. I'm Karen. Karen Black. Everybody, oh. th they hear my name and they automatically think I'm the crazy actress. So oh. ninety ninety percent call me Karen. Well, on at least first you're not. Uh, you're not. I feel bad. My sister's name's Karen. My other sister's name's Deb. So now I'm very happy that I have the name Arden because they don't <laughs> say me Arden. Yeah, I was going to say, have you ever met another Arden? Um, well. That's an interesting question. Here's the deal. I was in a newsroom years ago. I was a reporter. And one of the gals that was the head of uh, advertising said, Nan, 
I've never heard of that name Arden except my best friend in high school. And I said, well, who was your best friend? And she said, Arden Troop. And apparently my parents were friends with the troops and Arden babysat my older sisters. And I said, oh my gosh, that's what I'm named for. And she moved to Alexandria, Virginia. She was a great lady. And I was in my twenties and I wrote a letter and she, it letter came back the day before Christmas. And she had a picture of her with a cat and a golden retriever. She had two kids, she had a husband. And so thank you. Nobody's ever asked me that. Thank you, Chris. Um, so yes, I was named after my sister's babysitter. Very cool. That's and now name. we need to find out who she was named after. Oh gosh, that's too much. Right? And yeah, we're only making, making a mocktail back. tonight. So, you know, <laughs> I can't you know handle, where that name originated I can't from. The truth. Um, <laughs> there is though, there was, and I never got to meet the gentleman. There was an Arden Moore who was the um, director of the Fort Worth, Texas Zoo. Okay. And Kathy, tell us in Oklahoma, I should run for mayor where? More Oklahoma. No, the other one. Ardmore. Oh, Ardmore. <laughs> I'm Ardmore in Ardmore. Yeah, I went there with, with my family and I said, oh, my name's Ard Ardmore. I'm so glad to be here in Ardmore. And they all looked like me like I was an alien. So. <laughs> well, that's just right up the road. <laughs> get back to Chris. Chris. Get back to Chris. Yeah, it's about you know, me. Come on. We, yeah. I know that we have people who don't have weeks and months, but you know, there are how can people help? Because I'm sure people are writing in now. And you kind of touched upon it because somebody can drive from point A to point B or give us some scenarios that maybe would sure. engage some of our um, our viewers. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question because that's my goal is to make it so that they can choose how they want to get involved, right? So when you, you create a free account, it's all automated on Dubert. And then there's these different profiles that you can choose to turn on and set up. So one of them is a transporter profile. Okay. And then there's even, you know, different types, right? Like there's the rescue relay, which is their longer distance journeys with one volunteer to the next, to the next, to the next. And then we also have local rides and local rides is kind of like one volunteer, one trip. Right. So if okay. if the rescue or shelter needs you to take an animal, maybe to a spay and neuter clinic or oh, to yeah. an adoption event or something like that, yeah. um, again, works just the same. Like you'll get an alert from the system um, and what you do when you click on the email or, or the text, if it's a local ride, it'll take you out to a page and you can see real time like because, you know, maybe someone else signed up before you. Um, you'll see what legs are open, left to be filled. And so you can literally just click to sign up. Well, I'm just um, asking, are you swiping left or right? <laughs> <laughs> this is better than exactly. a dating app, don't you think? Because you are a live oh, yeah. dating app. That's what yeah. you are. Yeah. No, and, and, and the program has grown. Like we've continued to develop it. So we've got so much more functionality out there now that, um, than we did when, when I started eight, eight years ago. It's crazy. Wow. Um, but really my goal was to make it so that, you know, I, part of my experience was as a pilot, when I got into this, after people started to share my name, I would get calls from all over the country. And I'm like, but I live in Wisconsin. I can't fly to California to fly to Seattle, to fly back to Wisconsin. It doesn't work. Yeah. And, I'm, and I, but they wouldn't know that just from my email. So I'm like, there's gotta be a way we can create a system. I can say, well, you I are here. an IT guy. I am. Right. <laughs> and I live here. These are the days I'm available. And here's how far I'm willing to go. Okay. Sounds logical, but it didn't exist. So that's wow. why I created it. And so now you put in your zip code, you tell the system how far of a radius, right? So any which direction um, that you're willing to travel. And then if a transport gets plotted through your area, we let you know. And then you can decide if you want to, you know, opt in and help mm -hmm. out. Um, and like I said, everything's all automated. We try to make it really super easy for you to, um, you know, to get involved and be a transporter. And then for fosters, we've got yeah. all sorts of stuff too, right? Functionality. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah, because when, you know, there's different reasons that organizations need foster homes, dogs, mm -hmm. cats, right? All sorts of things. 
Sometimes it's just a weekend foster. Sometimes it's a longer term foster. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's an overnight foster. We do transports. You saw some of the longer transports. Yeah. The software will automatically insert overnight legs. So oh. that, you know, because we don't want people driving through the night. Right. Um, so they can, you know, 7 or 8 p.m., whatever the last time the leg is, somebody's actually fostering those animals overnight, giving them a safe place to stay, you know, food and water, things like that, getting them prepared for the next day journey. Right. Um, so you can be a foster and then you know, what's cool is we've continued to build out ways for you to engage. So as a foster, you can, we, we've created pages, right, that are specific to your animal where you can load pictures and videos and tell people the likes and dislikes and all that kind of stuff in an effort to really be an ambassador. Because when you're, yes. when you're a foster, you're an ambassador for that animal. Your job is to get them adopted. And, mm -hmm. you know, people say to me all the time, like, oh, I could never foster. I'd fall in love and I would want to keep them all. And I say, I, I totally get it, right? Because I'm the same way. <laughs> but when you think about yourself, as an, yeah. But when you think about yourself as an ambassador, it kind of changes your thinking. Like, you know, my yeah. job is to find this animal the perfect home, to find them that forever home. And yes, they would be fine with me and they would have a wonderful life. But if I can now help 10, 15, 20 different animals have a forever life by being their, you know, part-time or temporary ambassador, oh, it's such a great feeling. And, and so I wanted to make it so that people could I like that. That's video a great and photos and all that. And I got to do a shout out. My oldest sister, Karen, who I mentioned, and her husband, Rick, live in Dyer, Indiana. Karen, you listen to the show. You're going to probably freak out right now because I'm saying your name. But I love, they're both retired and they are now fosters and nice. they get, they get animals as far away as Texas. And I love it when I call my sister and she goes, oh, I got a cutie pie here today. And one of them was named Debbie when well, my other sister's named Debbie. So that was hilarious. And oh, she's just a cutie, great temperament. She's getting along with our dogs and blah, blah, blah. And I think the term ambassador, you just... You that's perfect, um, Chris, because you don't want to be a hoarder and you want to be able to give each pet a good, full, enriched life. And I love this shot. This is this is for you all out there in Meowie Hour. This is something none of us can do. This right. is kitty <laughs> yoga at its finest. So and, Chris, I have a question. So uh, during yeah. during COVID, you know, the shelters all got emptied out. And they were really moving cats around, trying to fill the need in the shelters. Is that kind of slowed down now? Is that is that still a problem that certain areas don't have cats for adoption or dogs if, for adoption? Believe it or not, it, it, it is. Um, unfortunately, the, the numbers show that about 70% of the animals euthanized in shelters are cats. And it, for years, decades, really, um, there was always more everywhere, right? Cats, you know, they estimate there's like 90 million um, stray or not stray, mm -hmm. I should say feral or community cats. Right. But thankfully through, you know, dedicated spay and neuter programs and things like that, the population's coming down. And so now there is an opportunity to transport animals, cats from areas of oversupply, if you will, to areas where there's not as many and they can be adopted out. And I remember years, you know, eight years ago when I started, people they never could dream that we would be transporting cats. And now we are. And there's lots of cats that get transported for that very reason, is that there's there's a need, there's a demand. People want to adopt them and give them loving homes. Um, and where they are, there's there's too many, right? So that's what ends up contributing to the euthanasia. Well, so I know also up in Wisconsin and in the cold areas, there's no yep. kittens during the real cold season. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. That's true. So what about... I've got a cat or a dog from a shelter. I'm a tra I want to volunteer to be a transporter. What are some safety tips you can give them? Because uh, you don't want the cat or the back or the dog in the background going, are we almost there yet? Are we almost there yet? Are we almost there yet? And singing you know, it, music. Um, yeah, right. Tips for folks to how to transport and how to handle the um, songs that some dogs and cats might give you or even the um, wonderful air freshener not that they yes. might be able to bequeath you uh when you have to have your windows up yeah those are those are always the fun ones right um <laughs> yeah 
trust me, it's just as much fun when you're flying up at, you know, six, 8,000 feet in the air and you're like, <laughs> you can't open a window, right? Then, then no. You're just kinda, <laughs> oh, like this a lot. Yeah. But, you know, I will say the the amazing thing to me is when you're, when you're doing these transports, there's, these animals know, they just know you're there to help them. They're, they're, there's a, I, I can't describe it in anything else, but an energy that you feel and that they feel. And people always ask me and they're like, oh my God, do the dogs try and get out? And they try and get, I said, you know what? Most of the time, as soon as I fire up the plane, or as soon as you start the car, they, they take a nap, right? They go to sleep and it's a, it's a very peaceful, restful. You can kind of see, you know how when you're, you're sleeping, but you're, you know, you're on and then you go on yeah. vacation. You're just like, oh, <laughs> that's that feeling that they have of being out and, and knowing that they're going to a better place. And so what I tell people is just approach it with an open mind, right? There's nothing to be, people are nervous. I completely respect that. We try and provide videos and try and explain to them, here's the process and here's what's going to happen. And, um, but there's lots of hugs, lots of people that want to help you if you're new to, to doing this. Um, the animals absolutely appreciate it. You can do things, um, such as, you know, if you want to make them even more calm, right, you can play like nice classical music and yeah, things like that like in the that. car. Yeah. Right. Or there's composure treats or there's other things, you know, some, some people will use some scents and stuff like that, like lavender scents, anything that just is yeah. calming. A little feel away. That I'm not doing a commercial here, but yep. those fake pheromones, it works for yep. some, not others. Right. And I'm just wondering, you know, we're in a crazy time and... I'm just thinking there's a lot of ways that we all two-leggers can do some good. And this seems like, oh, pardon the pun, right up the alley of many people, right? Right. Yeah, because even if you say, look, I'm really busy, right? I get it. Everybody's super busy. If you one day a month did a transport, right? Three months out of the year, you were a foster, right? You don't have to commit. This isn't a lifelong commitment. Yeah, this is good. Good. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because there's so many ways that, you know, you think about it sometimes, particularly in the summer, right? Things have kind of slowed down and you're like, you got nothing to do on the weekends, right? Just yeah. if you have an account, you'll get the transport alerts. You can sign up for a transport. You can be alerted when there's, you know, fosters that are needed for an animal. And again, it could be, it could be an overnight foster. It could be a weekend foster. It could be a longer term one. Um, so there's all sorts of needs. And I say, find a reason to say yes right? Don't worry so much about, but what about this? And what about that? What about this? There's, there's always a solution. And, you know, it's, it's such a great feeling to know that you are part of impacting that animal's life and being a part of documenting their journey and knowing where they're going. There's so many people that want to know what happened to that animal that I fostered, exactly. you know, where did they get yeah. adopted? Yeah. You just hit it on the head. Find a reason to say yes. And we want to Chris to hang with us because we've got about 17 minutes left in the show mm -hmm. so you get to hang out because right. we're going to do uh, a little profile on the is it the egyptian mao is that what yeah. we're doing and i'm going to go off screen for a minute because i got to get things ready for our mocktail which is going to be a sweet treat for all of you so our all breed cfa cat judge kathy black you're in good pause Okay, so uh, just a reminder to those of you that follow the CFA Facebook page, we are highlighting a breed a week alphabetically. And so this week is the Egyptian Mal. Uh, when CFA highlights the breed, if you have that breed, you can upload your cat's picture. Uh, we did the companion cats here a couple weeks ago. And um, and then CFA picks the winner each week of those uh, cats' pictures that have been uploaded as the feature uh, owner cat, owned cat of that breed. So this week is the Egyptian male. And this is a very interesting breed of cat. It is a naturally spotted breed of cat. And it comes in three colors. And one of them is the smoke pattern, which is the one I'm showing here. And even though, uh, uh, for those of you that don't know, a smoke cat has the silver gene, so it has an outer color, and then a, the undercoat is a white. So uh, we call that smoke. And even if the, even in this pattern, you can see the spots. And I've got some other pictures to show you. This cat has really um, got a lot of mystery surrounding its origins. 
they say that it was a cat that was worshipped by the pharaohs and the kings because the word Mao means cat in a lot of different languages, but also in ancient Egypt. And there's no question that the Egyptians revered their cats as gods and treasures. Um, and even going back to 1550 BC, there were spotted cats depicted on frescoes. So uh, some people say that the uh, origin, original Pharaoh tombs of the cats, those were Egyptian mouths. Others say it was the Abyssinians. They kind of fight over who that is. But it is a naturally spotted breed of cat. Like I said, they come in three colors, silver, bronze, and smoke. All of them have a green eye in a shade that we describe as gooseberry. And they have a worried expression to their, uh, to their face that kind of gives them a very unique look in this breed. This is a silver Egyptian male here. So here's the three colors, just showing them all together. Silver is is the most popular. That's the color we see the most often. In fact, I think we just finished our CFA cat show season. I think there's two national winning silver Egyptian males in championship this year from last season. Uh, this is the bronze color and this is the smoke color. So like I was talking about earlier, even in the smoke, you can see the spotted pattern coming through on this cat, which is really cool. And there's that lovely gooseberry green eye. This is the bronze color with that worried look and the beautiful spots. And then, like I said, most of the time we see the silvers. This is a male. This is a female. There's a picture of gooseberries. Um, I, the, I had to Google that to find a picture of gooseberries, but that's what the gooseberry green color is. And uh, so the males obviously are larger, broader headed, broader chest you know, more substantial boning than the females, but they really have a beautiful head structure with the equilateral triangle, a modified wedge to it with the gooseberry green eyes and the red brick nose in this case. So that is our Egyptian male breed. Nice, nice. What'd you think, uh, Mr. Chris? Oh, I love it. They're beautiful. I know. And this lady knows every friggin' cat breed down to their Oh, I know all the ones that I know all the ones that CFA recognizes. There's okay. other there's other cat breeds and other associations that I'm not that familiar with. But, and yeah. um, Chris, this is another thing I wanted to let you know is the uh, Cat Fancier Association has a ha household cat division, and they are so trying to do their part to champion all cats, including community cats and all that. And there's this cool program. It's called um, CCW, and we'll let Kathy explain that. Yes, it stands for Companion Cat World. And when you register your cat, it's a one-time fee of $13. You get a membership card like what Arden was showing you there. You can also get luggage tags, which are, which are great to put on carriers. So when your cat goes to the vet. Yeah, and you can put them on the Dubert uh, carriers. Yeah. When, you, when you, you upload the picture, you get that card. The picture also goes on our gallery of cats on our CFA website and... 10% of that one-time fee goes to a local shelter. So you can check that all out at cfa.org slash ccw. All right. Uh, shifting gears. I know it sounds like it just opened a beer, but don't get excited. It does. <laughs> um, one of my superpowers, Chris, is I save lives by teaching people veterinary approved pet first aid. I'm a master instructor. I teach people actually a two day, 16 hour program to become instructor. And one of our most popular programs is a three hour cat first aid class. And there's my teaching team, but I also teach it for cats and dogs. And we actually sold out for May already. We do have an opening for um, some spots in our June class. I believe the June class, let me get this here, will be um, June 23rd. So any of you out there, go to Pet First Aid and the number U, and you can sign up for that. You have a very busy schedule, Mr. Chris, but you're also um, a cat daddy. Yeah. And the gift I give everybody that is a guest on my show is if your time permits, we would love to comp you and have you get certified in Cat First Aid if you are able to make the class. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. So I'll send you the invite. Um, uh, but, or like we did with the itty bitty kitty brigade, I can't make that name up. Um, they had their whole staff and, um, and I, I taught them. And so cool. it might be good because in, you know, you've got people that are transporting, we show how to safely put a cat towel, wrap them, put them in a carrier, all these other things. I'm a fear free pet uh, speaker as well. So if it's something that's up your alley that you like, you won't hurt my feelings. But if you do, I, I always give that as a gift to my um, special guest. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So there you go. And your cats are talking to you right now. And we make it fun because yep. I don't think there's any rule that said first day has to be boring or scary. Right. So, Harder you know, makes yeah. it a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this guy too. Right, Casey? My yeah. pets wouldn't cooperate, so I had to use a stuffed animal, but, you know, <laughs> that's just how they are. <laughs> yeah, this guy lets you do one-handed CPR on him. Yeah, he's, he's a lot more cooperative than mine were. Yeah. So is, are you guys thirsty? Yeah. Because um, this is the first of the month. So for all of you out there, this is a mocktail. I'm calling it the perfect strawberry mocktail for two. Um, it, cause it's always time to toast all fine felines with this fruit filled drink and a big shout out to Teresa Kiger, all breed CFA cat judge and editor of cat talk and Mr. IT man. Look, she creates the graphics for my you did a great job. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So for this recipe, I'm going to just hope it works. Cause I have this small blender right here. Um, <laughs> You're going to take um, uh, some uh, cut up uh, watermelon and you're going to put it in this little blender. And Casey and, and Rusty are mad because there's no whipped cream. There's mm -hmm. a whole joke for that one. Um, and then you're going to take some cut up strawberries. This is perfect time right now. Strawberries are doing good. Yeah. And uh, they're bummed because I'm now going to add some lemon sorbet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I'm putting it in the blender. Pray for me that this doesn't go a hot mess all over my laptop. But, you know, that's all right. It's only a live show. And she's like, wait a minute. That kind of smells good. Yeah. Yeah, it's it lemon. Does. You're not supposed to like <laughs> citrus. You're not supposed to like citrus, Casey. <laughs> a little bit more, Art. A little bit more. He's my, he's my chef. Uh, he's my sous chef. Um, all right. So here's where it comes from. Whoops. All right, so I'm put the lid on it. Casey, watch your ears. Everybody listen for the fun. This is perfect. Here we go. <laughs> and it broke. <laughs> She's a mad scientist. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Then you take your glass. I like a little cocktail glass, and I, I already have a couple of uh, strawberries ready. Well, this is fun. Here we go. This is a real mess on my desk. Pray for me. Here we go. We're going to pour this in. And it's made for two. You're going to top it with a ginger ale. Ooh. Obviously, you don't put carbonated things in a blender. <laughs> and uh, it can make and it more exciting. You stir it all up. So at this time, I'd like us all to raise a glass. It can be the uh, perfect strawberry mocktail for two. It could be, what are you drinking, Chris? I just got water tonight. You got water? <laughs> what do you got, Miss Kathy? I have iced tea. Iced tea? Whatever is your preferred <laughs> drink, we want to raise a glass and we want to toast to all cats, purebreds and mutts like this one, who make us better humans. Cheers, kitties. Cheers. Here. Mm, this is this is very delicious. There's no whipped cream. I know you're disappointed. Hey, you could have put whipped cream on top of it. I'm you? not going to put whipped cream tonight. I have little space here. <laughs> I get attacked by the ginger boys. But what do you think of my concoction, Chris? It looks really good. It's very, very, very refreshing. Now, for those out there, if you wanted, you could put a, um, an ounce of vodka if you wanted. But I don't need it. Yeah. This is this is my yeah. fruit drink for the day. It's, yeah, very it's a nice fun. summer, nice spring and summer drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I know on your website, uh, dubert.com, which we've been promoting, Chris, you actually have a little link to a video. Can you talk about that? Because that's kind of helping people. 
literally you have to yeah. which video um, <laughs> a lot of videos okay but it was kind of setting people up to explain how they can do be part of this so it's kind of like an introduction video i guess you did right and he's like yeah, yeah but i sure so, I'm yeah, I mean, I've got own. all sorts of stuff. I and mean, what, what we try to do is celebrate what people do. So when they do transports and stuff, we encourage them to share their photos and videos and we try and promote those. Yes. Um, but we definitely do have a lot of <clears throat> a lot of videos in the software to teach people how to use it if they've got questions and stuff like that. And then right. I also do my own show to try and bring more awareness and get more people involved. Tell us about that. So I do a show called the Animal Innovation Show. And as I say, whether it's um, a product, a service, or even just an idea, if it's helping animals or the people that love them, then we want to know about it. So um, I do two two days a week, every Tuesday and Thursday. And um, it's- Is it a it, podcast or what's the format? All, kind of all of the above, right? We do live on Tuesday and Thursday, and then we have edited versions that go to Facebook, YouTube, IGTV, podcasts, LinkedIn, blog right we do it all i'm an it guy right we gotta hit them all up um, well, i want people to know so you call it animal innovation yeah the animal innovations show and if you just go to dubert.com slash podcast because it's easy to remember yeah um, that's good yeah and so you can see more there we've done we're over 100 episodes um so we've been going for this particular show's been going for about a year and a little bit a little bit wow. yeah january of 2021 so Five years from now, where do you see Dubert.com and the and the fate of uh, animals looking for homes? So I I see a bright future for everything, right? I'm really super excited. I mean, just with what we've done in the years that Dubert's been up, and there's so much more coming, so much more in the development that we want to do to help. To me, I really want to engage people in all the ways that they can help animals and to be a part and to really build the bond with their local rescue and shelter. Um, I, I believe very much in the importance of community and helping out your community. So we're trying to come up with new ways for them to be able to support their local rescue or shelter and get involved. So five years from now, I, I see transport will still be a thing. We'll still be moving animals where they can find their loving homes. And I also see things expanding. I see us taking some of the best practices and things we've learned and helping other countries around the world. Um, I mean, they estimate estimate that there's 33 million stray dogs in India. And you just kind of go, where to begin? Well, hey, it used to be that way in the US, right? We said- Your C-130, really, there's your C-130. You know, there's my C-130, <laughs> right? If somebody <laughs> wants to help me out with that. Good job, good job, yeah. She that's a great home. idea. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, because if we look at the cats of tomorrow mm -hmm. and it comes to them finding homes, what are you saying? I see every cat finding a home, right? I, I really do. I see our shelters being empty five years from now. I see people really engaging and supporting and, and planning ahead. I mean, there's so many things that you need to do when you have animals, right? Plan for, yeah. unfortunately, your demise and what happens and those are the sad stories as how sometimes animals end up in shelters is because people don't plan ahead. So mm -hmm. I see all that going away because I, there's so many more states that are recognizing animals as sentient beings. They're not property anymore. Right. Um, and that's something that really warms my heart is knowing that these animals, hopefully five years from now, will have rights and we'll treat them very differently than uh, how they've been treated in the past. There is a great gal out there with Second Chance for Pets, uh, Amy Scheiber. And she also is on that same uh, bandwagon to help people get now uh, wills, things set up that says what happens if I should pass away or something happens. So the kitty always has a home or the dog. So um, I think we need to uh, clone you and people like Amy. And I hope you have enjoyed, I don't know if you knew what to expect on Meowie Hour, but you survived. It, I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, and I appreciate it. We, right. we enjoyed having you. Yes, certainly. And I and, and everybody, please check out dubert.com. There's a lot of things there. There's, like he said, you can find a way to maybe help a little bit. Nobody's asking you to do it 24-7. And I also want to thank the Cat Fancier Association for coming up with Meowie Hour, our new sponsors, Doc and Phoebe, my cool co-pilot. You're, you're okay if I say the word co-pilot to her, right? Um, oh, that's good. 
uh, Kathy Black and Destiny. My boys are waiting at uh, the refrigerator because they know it's time to eat. So uh, next week, who do we got? Next week, back for popular demand, and she's got so many dimensions. She is a cat behavior consultant. We're talking about Allison Hunter Frederick, and she's going to talk about cat agility and shy cats. Hmm. So she's cool. quite the talent. She's an up-and-comer. We're very happy that she's coming back. So <clears throat> until next time, it'll be same cat channel, same cat time. We'll see you on Meowie Hour. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.